Welcome to Thursday's edition of COVID-19. Our daily tally is holding steady at a high of 1,600 cases. And we have more on this reality in a bit before delving into the efforts to ride over the economic repercussions of the pandemic later on in the program. Here first is the broader pandemic coverage with our Kwon Soa. Now, Soa, there's been a very slight drop from Wednesday's tally for Korea on this Thursday. Yes, Sunny, very slight indeed, uh, just 15 fewer cases than the day before. That meaning exactly 1,600 cases were confirmed as of 12 a.m. this Thursday. And that includes 1,555 domestic transmissions and 45 cases from abroad. So for the ninth straight day, Korea is reporting more than 1,000 infections. And uh, this Thursday, this marks the second highest figure Korea has ever reported following that record high we just had a day ago. Now, fresh cases continue to emerge at department stores in the capital's whole, as well as nightlife entertainment venues in the southeast of the country, such as in Gyeongsangnam-do province and Busan. And uh, a new cluster infection was reported on a naval vessel. Six service members of the Cheongye unit, which is currently on an anti-piracy mission off the coast of Africa, have tested positive, with a number likely to grow as around 300 per personnel are currently on that South Korean destroyer. And uh, back on land, uh, we've got a drop in cases in the capital Seoul from the record high of over 600 yesterday, 520 we're seeing this Thursday, almost 500 in Gyeonggi-do province. Uh, similar figures to yesterday in the southeast of the country, but we're seeing quite a significant rise here in the center of the nation in Daejeon and Chungcheong Namdo province. And in fact, the proportion of cases outside the metropolitan region is now inching closer to 30 percent, as you can see here. And with tougher social distancing measures having been implemented in the non-capital regions beginning this Thursday, we will have more details on that with our Choi won Jung in a bit. But let's take a look at the general figures here. We've got now an accumulated caseload of 173,511 cases here in the country. And on the vaccination front, uh, yesterday we had over 93,500 people who got at least uh, one dose of their vaccine shot and more than 102,000 people who got fully vaccinated on Wednesday. Right. So meanwhile, on the international front, I hear a growing number of countries are noting resurgences. Right, Sonny. Some 80 countries saw cases tick higher in the past week, according to reports. And in many cases, it's being sustained by factors similar to what Korea is experiencing here. More infections among the younger population and also higher risks due to the Delta variant. Now, in Southeast Asia and especially Indonesia is facing a critical situation with another record high of over 54,000 cases reported in the past day. The majority of hospitals are fully occupied. Partial lockdowns have been implemented on the popular islands of Java and Bali. Now, the Delta variant is causing more trouble in Europe as well. The UK posted a one-day total of more than 40,000 infections for the first time in six months. Cases are also spiking to the 40,000s in Spain, especially with concerns over traveling among younger people. The U.S. has seen a rise in uh, transmissions by at least 10 percent in 46 states in the past week. And especially worrisome is Los Angeles reporting more than 1,000 cases for five straight days as of Wednesday local time. And a city that saw more than 1,000 cases in the past day was Tokyo, with just a little over a week left until the Summer Olympics. A cluster outbreak at a hotel that's hosting Brazil's Olympic delegation stirred up more anxiety as at least seven workers tested positive. Uh, they, however, had no contact with the Brazilian athletes and staff. And let's also take a look at uh, the country. Some of the numbers that I just mentioned, uh, the countries such as the U.S. has 34.8 million cases now in total, the U.K. 5.2 million, and uh, Spain more than 4 million, and Indonesia here at 2.67 million cases in total. And the world now has a total of 189.1 million infections. Those are the updates I have for now. I'll see you in a bit after the government briefing. Sunny? All right, so I thank you for now. Right, back at the local front, there have been some grim predictions about our daily tally in the near future, it's even as it hovers well above 1,000 cases a day. For more on this, I have our Cheo Won-jong here in the studio. 
Right, so Won Jung, uh, some pundits are believe that is our daily caseloads will top 2,000. The number of daily infections in Korea have shattered record after record in recent days. And one expert uh, told me over the phone yesterday there's a clear possibility of the figure hitting 2,000 mark before the situation starts to get better. Let's take a listen. The number 2,000 actually is coming from a calculation. If we go on a speed like this uh, in the increments that we're having um, and the R0 number incre um, being over one uh, makes us think that it is possible to hit the 2000 mark and maybe something beyond it. He also attributed the worsening outbreak to the growing number of cases from the Delta variant, which is known to be 60 percent more transmissible than the other variants. However, the expert once again highlighted the importance of a vaccination as a solution solution to curb this latest wave of infections. We need to get a hold of vaccinations as many as possible. It's a battle between the speed of the vaccination versus the speed of transmission and uh, the reason the number is increasing is only because we're losing in the battle of the speeds. So in a nutshell, we need to administer vaccines as quickly as possible and to as many people as we can to prevent the transmissions before they can occur. Right, and staying with intentions to prevent transmissions, we're looking at tougher restrictions outside of the capital region. Right, as you know, areas outside the greater Seoul area have been under level one social distancing measures, but starting on Thursday, uh, levels of two, uh, level two social distancing measures are now in effect in many of those regions nationwide. Now, if you take a look at this map on the screen right now, you can see an overview of our social distancing guidelines that have been issued in each region. The greater Seoul area, including Seoul, Incheon, and Gyeonggi-do province, are under level four, the highest on the four-tier ladder from July 12th to July 25th. Level two is in force in most other areas of the country, like Busan, Ulsan, Daegu, and Jeju. Only Sejong, the Jeolla-do province, provinces, and Gyeongsangbuk-do province are under level one. Under the level two restrictions, up to eight people are allowed to gather. Bars, coffee shops, and restaurants must close by midnight. And on Jeju Island, due to large cluster infections reported at bars and clubs, more than 1,300 nightlife venues on the island have been ordered to close starting Thursday. Jeju authorities are said to be considering a hike in its distancing measures level three. I see, level three. Right, then, before you go, Won Jung, do tell us a bit about the second round of bookings for Moderna vaccines for those in their 50s. Right, so people in their 50s have been uh, booking their vaccine appointments again since 8 p.m. on Wednesday. Now, this gives them a, uh, another chance to sign up after the first round of bookings earlier this week. Uh, shut down premature, uh, prematurely. With many of those eligible having failed to make their appointments from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Wednesday, nearly 400,000 people book their reservations. Now, uh, up on the screen uh, right now is the inoculation timeline for people in this age group. People between the ages of 55 to 59 can now make their reservation from July 12th to July 24th. Uh, their vaccination will kick off on July 26th and run through August 14th, extended by one week compared to the original schedule. Now, this will allow health authorities to spread out their inoculations over a longer time period, relieving the pressure on supplies. And for those aged 50 to 54, vaccine bookings will become available, available in rolling phases. A registration will open for 53 and 54 years old on July 19th, those aged 50 to 52 on the next day, and everyone in the 50 to 54 age bracket on the July 21st. Now, their uh, you know, vaccination will run from the 16th of August until the 25th. In all, some five and a half million people in their 50s will be eligible to get their shots, a part of the much wider efforts by health authorities to provide at least one dose to 22 million Koreans in the third quarter. I see. All right, Won Jong, thank you very much for the coverage. Thank you. Right, the briefing's about to start. We'll come back to you afterwards. As of today, we are also uh, continuing to receive the booking for these uh, eligible people and uh, for the uh, vaccination. And a total of 70% uh, percent of the eligible recipients have completed uh, their uh, vaccination appointments. And as for those between the ages of 55 and 59, uh, as until today, we have a total of 700,000 people uh, finishing their booking. 
and a total of 2.5 million have completed the booking process, and the rate of booking stands at about 71 percent. And as for the faculty members, uh, we have the uh, booking rate standing at 93 percent, and also um, 45 percent uh, booking rate for those who are in the 60s who have failed to receive their vaccines in, in the earlier um, periods of uh, the uh, in the earlier months and uh, to this end the health authorities will make sure uh, that we have the smooth uh, booking for the vaccination appointments and at specific periods of time we have some people uh, with higher uh, we have the time uh, frame with higher traffic and if you you um, avoid such a time frame, we uh, believe that you could have greater access and easier access to the bookings. And as for the uh, vaccine supply, uh, we have also Pfizer vaccines. About 790,000 vac uh, doses have been uh, supplied on the 14th, and a total of more than 20 million doses have arrived here in Korea. And also, uh, as for those uh, uh, eligible for uh, the uh, month of July, we also have finished the uh, 2 million doses to, that have been arrived here. And going forward in August, we also have in plan about 27 million uh, of the vaccines and more also scheduled for September. And through the month of July and August, we have AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna, Janssen vaccines set to arrive here in the country. And next, as for the international outbreak of COVID-19, we have some updates. Globally, on a weekly basis, according to the WHO data, we also have about 3 million um, new cases, which is about 11 percent on week increase. And the U.S., the North America region, has also seen a greatest uh, hike in the number of latest infections, uh, which has surged about by 31 percent. Uh, meanwhile, we are seeing a decrease in the number of COVID-19 fatalities, and this is followed by Southeast Asia, with about 24 percent of the total uh, in infections being clustered in this region, uh, and the weekly analysis shows that there has been an increase by about 16 percent on week. And in Indonesia, we are seeing record-breaking uh, daily tally, and in Bangladesh, uh, we are also seeing a weekly um, uh, tally also increasing by over 30 percent and the COVID-19 uh, fatalities increasing by over 50 percent. And across in Europe, uh, centering around the UK and Spain and other countries, we are also seeing a 20 percent on week rise in the number of new infections. And globally, we are seeing continued spike in the number of cases. And we have to say uh, that it is very crucial uh, that we comply with the basic quarantine rules. And as for the damage uh, compensation team, team for the COVID-19 vaccinations, we have carried out the fifth round of the screening uh, meeting. And the on the 13th of July, they had the four, fifth round of uh, the meeting, and they have looked at the correlation of the side effects that have been reported with the COVID-19 vaccines. They have been looking at data comprehensively, and they have concluded that in this specific screening, they have uh, looked at a number of cases, and they have decided to uh, subject 200 cases to be subject to uh, such compensation. And also, uh, we have decided to compensate about 700 cases of the reported side effects. And also, there were um, side effects like severe uh, symptoms, which have been excluded uh, originally, but we are uh, expanding the number of uh, um, budgets uh, for the uh, medical treatments so up to 10 million million Korean won, and we have also deemed nine of them uh, to receive these uh, payments, and also four have already completed uh, their receive, uh, receiving of these, uh, uh, of these support. And as of today, aside from Sejong, Jeonbuk, Jeonnam, and Gyeongbuk provinces, we have elevated the social distancing level to level two in non-capital regions as well, uh, because we are seeing a hike in the number of daily tally in the 
these regions outside the capital area as well. And to this end, we want to highlight once again the importance of the public's participation in the quarantine measures. The quarantine authorities will uh, make our exert efforts to continue to contain the virus. We ask you to, to continue to refrain from making unnecessary gatherings and outings. Moreover, if you have any clinical symptoms of COVID-19, please get tested as soon as possible. Despite the fact that you so show a little symptoms, you need to wear a face mask, wash your hands on a regular basis, and also have regular ventilation. In order to co overcome COVID-19, we need to exert our uh, concerted efforts. Right, that was Pei Young Tech with Thursday's afternoon briefing, and I have our Kwon Soa here at the desk with a gist, that is, of his address. Welcome back, Soa. Hi again. Well, first, uh, the official talked about the vaccination supply and completion rates. Uh, let's take a look at the age group uh, between 55 and 59, which uh, Choi won -sung earlier mentioned too. So it looks like 3.4 uh, million people have completed their reservation in that age group, and that's around 74.5% that are subject to vaccination uh, this month, according to the official. Uh, but I believe uh, the vaccination does continue through August, uh, if I remember correct. Uh, and uh, some 700,000 people have made their reservation uh, between 8 p.m. yesterday and noon today. And here on the table, we can see the uh, actual schedule. As I said, that age group is going to vaccinate between July 26th and August 14th. And also the official had some updates on the world uh, figures. And according to the WHO, which he cited, 11.5% increase was seen compared to a week before. And especially uh, the situation is uh, worsening in Asia, including in Indonesia and Bangladesh due to the Delta variant and those figures are also crucial when we take a look at the situation in Korea because we are also seeing an increase in the Delta variant. Yes, and he also had a few um, uh, mentionings about uh, more adverse response compensations that the government will give to people who have uh, had any adverse responses after getting vaccinated. I see. All right, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Korea's New Deal has been broadened significantly, both in size and scope. Details of the deal were shared by President Moon Jae-in earlier on Wednesday. And for more on this initiative, I have Professor Yang jun sung from the Catholic University of Korea. Good to see you again, Professor Yang. Happy to be here. And I also have Professor Yang Hee-dong from Iwa Women's University. Welcome back, Professor Yang. I nice to see you again. Right, Professor Yang Hee-dong, then we'll start with you. Let's begin with your assessment of the Korean New Deal, which was launched a year ago. Well, the uh, last year, late, the July 14th last year, the President Moon announced that uh, the Korean government will start a new uh, Korean New Deal project. Uh, well, with a long-term uh, view through uh, 2020 through uh, 2025. Uh, well, they started with the four major initiatives within this plan: the first, the Digital New Deal, Green New Deal, and uh, Social Security and Regional Balance. But we used to talk about the first two elements, which is the New Deal, a Green New Deal, and the Digital New Deal. But you should not forget about the remaining two others, uh, such as regional balance and uh, the training manpower. 
Uh, well, recently the Ukrainian government has presented very successful cases of those four initiatives within their plan. But personally, I think that those four elements are about the infrastructures that has long-term impact in Korean society. So if the Korean government announces and emphasizes their short-term uh, the impacts or short-term results from this very short you know, time period, which is on, on one year, it is too early right, to uh, prove or to argue any uh, tangible or successful cases from this initiative. So we should uh, take more time to take a look at whether all these initiatives have you know, come up with a potential a significant results. Right. right. Professor Yang, do you believe then that this ambitious initiative that was launched on the 14th of July last year, as Professor Yang mentioned, played a part perhaps then in boosting Korea's uh, standing in global GDP rankings for last year? Uh, not really. And I should mention that this does not have to do with the value of a New Deal in particular. It's just that the uh, if you look at the uh, uh, Korea last year, uh, economic uh, performance, uh, New Deal not only didn't have enough time to make any difference, uh, it also, the scale uh, may be too little to affect uh, the economy at least uh, last year. Uh, let me just explain that further. Last year, Korea did make the top 10 in terms of a total, uh, total GDP, but that's because Korean GDP fell less than most other countries. If you look at the OECD countries last year, only Turkey and Ireland had a positive growth rate. Korea had a relatively uh, small decline, uh, minus 0.1 percent, whereas the United States, uh, minus 3.5 percent. Japan, minus 4.8 percent. Germany, minus 4.9 percent. France, minus 8.2 percent. So it's a matter of Korea not falling as much as others rather than growing. So obviously, a New Deal probably didn't affect uh, Korea not falling as much as other countries. Uh, and then, uh, Korea's spending on the coronavirus, uh, I'm not including the New Deal here, but the uh, Corona's, uh, Korea's uh, deficit spending was less than most of the other OECD countries. Uh, Co uh, Korea's supplementary budget last year uh, was about 6.7 trillion won, that's about 3.5 percent of the uh, GDP, uh, and the uh, U.S. spent about 26.5 percent of its GDP dealing with the coronavirus. Japan spent 56.1 percent, uh, France 23.8 percent, Germany 39.3 uh, percent. Uh, Indonesia spent 7.9 percent. So even Indonesia, as a percentage of GDP, spent more than Korea, uh, but they had uh, somewhat worse results because they didn't have a positive growth rate. Uh, and then Korea's deficit spending was also less than most of the other GDP, uh, OECD countries. Uh, Korea was about minus 4.0 percent. OECD average was about minus 10.8 percent. Uh, so uh, the uh, point is the a uh, New Deal, uh, while it may have had positive effect, gave positive signals in the uh, Korean economy, I don't think it had uh, much effect on Korea achieving top 10 of the uh, 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 glo uh, global GDP uh, different countries last year. Where it may have had a uh, impact is in business investment, because in 2019, Korea's business investment was minus 6.6%. Uh, but last year it was plus 7.1 percent. Now, part of, uh, most of that took place in semiconductors and IT industries. Uh, part of that is because there was a, a large increase in demand for IT products last year because of the uh, global shutdown and lockdown, but it may also partially be due to some of the incentives that came from the uh, New Deal. Uh, so it may have had a positive effect through that channel, uh, but I don't think it had at least not yet, a very large impact on growth rates. Oh, I see. All right then, so it is yet to bear fruit then, this new deal. But having said that, Professor Young, I understand the deal itself though is, has been receiving much positive feedback from the international community. Could you tell us a bit more about this then? Well, they recently the OECD announced that uh, they want to adjust the uh, expected uh, the GDP growth of Korea from 3.3% uh, to 3.8%. Uh, so they adjusted this growth rate in, in two months. So they had increased about our GDP growth by 0.5% in two months, you know, from the March to May. Why? Because, you know, there are four elements that constitute the overall GDP, uh, the government, 
consumption, investment, export. And OECD, you know, the uh, planted the Korean government because the you know, Korean government has done a very superb job in four elements of the GDP. In other words, we had a very nice, uh, the lenient fiscal policy, and the government relaxed the social distancing for the sake of uh, the consumption, and they launched the Korean New Deal for the sake of investment on the promising new uh, industries. And also, uh, due to, as Professor Yang mentioned, due to the uh, uh, online the contact, right, uh, due to shutdown and lockdown, that we had a superb export of electronic products. So we have a very good job with, the four, with all those four elements of GDP. But the problem is, you know, uh, think about the consumption. You know, the, uh, the current government has been very uh, relaxing, re relaxed about the generous, about the uh, reducing the social distance restrictions. But now we had uh, a Delta variant. And the well, Delta variant is, ha, is very well, you know, they characterize a very fast diffusion, but very low at death rate. But the problem is, you know, the Lambda variant, which is very popular in uh, Latin America. Death rate is three times higher than the Delta variant. The death rate amount, almost amounts to 10%. If the Lambda variant arrives in Korea, that would be absolutely a different story in Korean Peninsula. So you should be really, really careful about the diffusion of this uh, the virus. And Korean government and Korean people should be really, really diligent in getting the vaccines as soon as possible. So that is a very, very big, big obstacle and also the, uh, the uh, moderators for the future expectation of our uh, you know, GDP growth. Right, the Lambda variant that was first identified in Peru. Right, right. right. Professor Yang, earlier yesterday, that would be Wednesday morning, like I mentioned at the start of our session, President Moon shared with us an expanded version of the country's New Deal, which is now worth 220 trillion won. That's up from 160 trillion won that was announced last year. What are your thoughts on this expansion? Okay, well, uh, first of all, I have a similar problem that I have with New Deal 1.0. Uh, now. Uh, building infrastructure, especially in the IT field, I think is good because uh, we found that uh, whenever we have extra room in the infrastructure, we found how to use it. Uh, so building an extra capacity there, I think, is a good move. But what I think, what I uh, do have some problem with is that it does not pay enough attention to uh, legal, regulatory, and institutional changes. Now, when we think of developing new, uh, new industries, when we think of uh, developing new companies, uh, it's the market's job to find a uh, promising area and invest in it. Now, the very fact that the government has to uh, discover various different industries and then put money into it means that the market mechanism is not working somehow. And uh, usually a lot of economists attribute that to a lot of uh, problems that we have in laws and regulations uh, that uh, makes going into new fields very difficult. Uh, and in this uh, New Deal, they do have some component of re uh, regulatory reform, legal reform, as it deals with these particular industries. But still, it seems to be a piecemeal job rather than a uh, complete overhaul that's required. Now, one of the things that's in New Deal 2.0 is that they're going to have a new sort of uh, headquarters where they ha uh, try to review this comprehensively and try to get rid of uh, regulations in this area. They're also coming up uh, with uh, new procedures so that the regulatory sand sandbox, uh, the uh, temporary relaxation of regulatory regulations in these industries, uh, they will examine and put in procedures where these uh, regulatory relaxations can become permanent. Uh, so those are, I think, positive contributions, but we need much more than uh, that. I think uh, the uh, re legal, regul regulatory, and institutional changes should be given about as equal uh, emphasis as infrastructure and spending on various projects. But right now, if you look at the plan, it just really forms a very tiny component of it. So that makes me a bit afraid that once government stops funding, then the projects will stop. I see, because the initiatives, the initiatives that is need to be taken by the market, right. not by the government. Yes. What then are your thoughts, Professor Yang, on this uh, growth initiative by the government? Well, as I already mentioned, and also there, are, you know, as Professor Young mentioned, that there are many people who are, who are very suspicious about the very uh, fundamental and very tangible impact from this initiative. As I already said, you know, all these major elements of the Korean New Deal will take a long time to uh, 
realize a very you know, tangible uh, effect. But take a look at and then uh, compare the uh, Korean New Deal 2.0 you know, versus Korean 1.0. And uh, there are major features in Korean 2.0 is they have expanded the coverage of you know, their, their, uh, their support and investment. As for the uh, digital New Deal, uh, they have invited a new term, which is metaverse. And as for the Green New Deal, they emphasize about the uh, 23 uh, national declared objective about uh, reducing uh, the greenhouse gases, you know, which is 24% uh, for uh, level about uh, of uh, 2019 uh, greenhouse gas the emission. Uh, so those are two major features, right? They have expanded for a digital New Deal and Green New Deal. As for the social security, they have invited to another terms. In other words, uh, raising uh, young generations and cares for the social poor and handicaps and, and elder generations. So this is a very good, but uh, as already the uh, Professor Young mentioned, uh, their perspective is pretty much focused on taking care of, uh, you know, uh, less cared people, and take a very long-term view about the green you know, environment and infrastructures and platforms for IT. But uh, if you uh, take a look at more details about, for example, the, the new elements of uh, raising uh, the young generations, and their policies are very, very short-sighted. For example, they will support young people working for small and medium size of very promised industries, such as AI and software, for six months. And they may support about $1,800 of payrolls. But if that, those people can get another job within six months, that's it. So probably their job career will be finished within six months with you know, gang support, very short amount of the payrolls. So we should think about more fundamental, more uh, overall and more you know, groundbreaking uh, initiatives to overturn about the, for the sake of recovery of economic growth. Because current, current government policy are very much short-sighted and pretty much appeals to the, uh, you know, the uh, populism. That's my personal perspective, which is I maybe see. too much. Hmm. Professor Yang, the, uh, the support that Professor Yang Hidong mentioned that's been granted to the young people comes under the pillar of the Human right. New Deal. Could you tell us a bit more about this? Okay, well, uh, the, uh, as Professor Yang mentioned, uh, the uh, uh, Development of human capital was part of this uh, New Deal plan, but not explicitly included, it's labeled as a part of the New Deal. But it was one of the pillars that was mentioned in the uh, New Deal 1.0 last year. So they sort of rebranded it uh, so that they put the name New Deal in it. Uh, but it is really a collection of the uh, 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 policies that was mentioned last year during New Deal 1.0 and some of the uh, new measures that were uh, introduced in government uh, plans for latter half of 2021 that was announced about a month ago. Uh, so it, in a sense, a lot of it is rebranding. Uh, it includes a lot of training programs in the uh, so-called DNA uh, areas and bioscience, which is, I think, good. Uh, it, gives, uh, it gives young people a shot at getting good jobs in those areas. What I'm not as uh, confident in is that there's a lot of procedures here where you're giving maybe about 100 to $200 to each individual young people so that uh, they, may, uh, they can uh, act as an incentive to save or uh, they can get an apartment that's uh, nearer to their uh, workplace or their universities and so on. I am not quite as confident that that's a money well spent uh, because it doesn't really improve, well, it will help them get by this month, but it will not really help them uh, improve their uh, skill levels, improve their human capital, uh, and it's questionable whether uh, they could use uh, this money to land a good job, which is what they really want. Uh, so there is some uh, question about that. Uh, the way to create uh, new jobs, especially for the younger people, is to have uh, reforms, as we mentioned earlier, especially in the legal and regulatory side. Uh, and again, that seems to be somewhat ignored in this area. Uh, also, one of the other problems uh, with the uh, New Deal is that it concentrates very much on some advanced industries, which is what people usually want, because we want the uh, latest shiny little new thing. But uh, for now, 
we are not going to make a living off of this new industries. It's going to take time to develop. It's going to get uh, need time to get new customers and demand. We have to, uh, for now, we have to depend on traditional industries and this new deal has very little on traditional industries. And same thing with the uh, job programs that's listed here. Uh, it doesn't really say anything about uh, providing or increasing jobs in traditional industries and that worries me somewhat and also uh, while there's a lot of new uh, job programs that are mentioned in this uh, human new deal uh, have they been really reviewed uh, government uh, had a job program review about a couple of months ago uh, it did not list the specifics just the numbers of programs that got good ratings and bad ratings and at least according to that report of the uh, job programs that the uh, government is running right, right now 14 was rated excellent, 81 was rated good, uh, 36 was rated modifications needed, and 14, reduction in program recommended. So I wonder if uh, these results were reflected in the, uh, this, this uh, human New Deal. Uh, if it isn't, if it wasn't, then it really needs to be. I see. And staying with the Human New Deal and going back to the concerns that you touched upon with regard to the support for the young people, which you claim would run the risk of becoming temporary solutions in the absence of job security, do you have any suggestions to make things better then? Well, the, uh, as already said, the, uh, you know, the supporting young generations is, is new invited for the Korean New Deal 2.0. But if you take a look at the, the government, the, the very detailed policies to support young generations, they have... Uh, you know, the vision four aspect to support young generations, which is our housing, wealth, education, and job. I do agree with those all four aspects to support young generations. But the problem is how. You know, as I already said, for the sake of wealth management, Korean government will support only needs six months, you know, up to uh, $1,800, only if those people are working for small and medium size, you know, the promising new industries. What about the other industries? As Professor Yang, well, we have two Yangs, Professor Yang A mentioned. Uh, well, the, uh, what about the housing? Because Korean government has been very, very you know, strict about the, you know, the, uh, the housing prices. So do we need any exceptional regulations to support young generations for the sake of their housing you know, problems? So you know, there is a potential for the conflict or tension within two support within two policies. In other words, you know, restricting uh, overall the house price, whether it's supporting young generations for their housing. What about the uh, education? What about the job? So there are many, many, you know, as I already said, there's, you know, devils in the detail. So we should take a look at how the current government will figure out all these potential devils in the detail because there's a very high potential that, you know, all those current government will really be in conflict or in tension, right, among themselves. So let's, let's take a look. Right, we'll have to wait and see then. Professor Yang chun -Sak, the other two pillars within this, this initiative are the Digital Green Deal and the Green uh, New Deal. The Digital New Deal, that is, and the Green New Deal. I was wondering, aside from cutting the red tape then, what other factors are essential to ensure the success of these two deals? Okay, well, uh, I think the government has to deal more with incentives and uh, goals rather than just putting money into uh, various different projects. And the, uh, some of the uh, things that I'm worried about is that they've listed all the things that they're going to spend money on, uh, but they're not as clear as what they hope this money will uh, achieve. Also, uh, they had a sort of a midterm report on how well they're doing with these projects and uh, there has been a lot of improvements in the areas that government wanted to have these improvements in. They have a lot of new facilities built, a lot of new people educated, uh, but this was a plan that lasts until 2025. So, uh, of course, you probably, at the beginning, you do need um, more time and effort to get things moving, so the first year, the uh, results may be lower than strictly one-fifth, but still, given that the administration, there's a change in administration next year. Uh, progress has not been as high as perhaps required if you want these projects to continue. If you want these projects to be continued into the next generation, you ha uh, next uh, administration, I should say, uh, then you need really a clear results, uh, clear uh, advancement, and I'm not sure if it's there yet. Uh, so if uh, these uh, advancements, if these achievements are not clearly met 
or overachieved, then the next president, even if he's from the same party, may say, uh, let's do something else. We've seen this a lot of times before whenever we change presidents. I see. Professor Yang Hidong, as part of efforts to encourage private investment in the country's growth efforts, we have what are called New, Fund, New Deal funds. Could you tell us a bit more about them? Well, New Deal fund is a very special purpose fund, uh, which is supposed to invest in very promising companies related to Korean New Deal. So at the moment, we have about uh, $200 million worth of uh, the funds. Uh, but uh, maybe, you know, yesterday, the uh, President Moon had announced that they will increase this amount by uh, $100 million. So, so far, I mean, uh, the last April, the Korean government has been very successful in selling out all the equities for 10 New Deal funds up to uh, $200 million. In other words, there are 10 individual funds up to uh, $200 million if you aggregate all the uh, the investment, you know, the fund size of those 10 individual funds. And all those 10 individual funds will look for very promised domestic companies related to uh, you know, Korean New Deal other plans. And all those 10 funds will sell their equities through 15 banks or the security firms to the public. And uh, how much? About 60% of $200 million will be sold, will be funded by the public. And the remaining 40% will be funded uh, by the Korean government. So that's how the, uh, these 10 individual and New Deal funds you know, have gathered about up to $200 million worth of uh, you know, the fund to support the very promising domestic companies related to the Korean New Deal. Uh, as of the end of June, about 30% of those Korean New Deal funds were invested on the domestic, uh, you know, the promising companies. So let's see how the remaining 70% of the funds will be invested in, you know, what kind of companies in the future. And what are your thoughts, Professor Yang jun -suk, on these funds? Okay, well, uh, latest reports seem to say that out of the, uh, tw if you take the uh, 26 New Deal funds, one year return on average of, of these uh, 26 funds is 57%. And this year, year to date, it, the return is 14%. Uh, given that the uh, COSPI uh, year, one year return was 48.3%, uh, Year to date is 10.88%. COSDAC, one year return 33.75%. Year to date is 6.89%. These funds are doing, on the average, very well, though there are some funds which are obviously doing better than others. Uh, now, there is some concerns about some distortion there because this has been pushed so uh, much politically uh, that that may be somewhat inflating the uh, price of these funds. Uh, and then another problem is that uh, one of the reasons why these funds are doing well is that a lot of these uh, funds uh, put money in Naver and Cacao, which has been growing a lot lately. Naver and Cacao is third and fourth largest Korean firms now in terms of capitalization. Uh, so if you take Naver and Cacao away, are they doing very well? Uh, that's up to question. Mm -hmm. And then the big uh, question that remains is that uh, there has been, in the previous administration, in the Lee myung Bak administration and Park Geun-hye administration, uh, there were funds, uh, sort of a cooperative funds between government and uh, a, a private. Uh, for Lee myung Bak, it was uh, on green, environmentally safe uh, investments. On uh, Park Geun-hye administration, it was on reunification-related invest investments. That started out very well, and then in a couple of years, fizzled away, especially when we changed presidents. So that also remains into question. But for now, the New Deal funds seem to be doing fairly well, at least better on average than Kostak and Kospi. I see. And to keep that on track, Professor Yang Hido, what support mechanisms do you propose to ensure a successful Korean New Deal then? Well, the Korean New Deal, again, uh, has very potential to uh, set the infrastructures for the potential growth for the next five years, ten years. So I don't think uh, the potential of a significant result will come up in a very short you know, the period of time. So we have to be very patient to observe the potential results from this investment. Well, what is the critical success factor for this project? Absolutely, the, we it invite the, the private sector's enthusiasm to support, uh, to uh, 
in a, a great way the Ukrainian government initiatives because it, as already uh, Professor Young mentioned, all these projects are initiated by, by the Korean government. Then what about the private sectors? Because the temporary jobs could be prepared and supported, provided by Korean government. But young generations are looking forward, you know, the, uh, the regular jobs. The regular jobs can be provided by, you know, the uh, private firm. So uh, let's see how the private companies are really cooperating with the Korean government to overturn uh, the uh, current, uh, you know, the disasters of COVID-19 and to recover the potential growth of the GDP. But another problem is we will have a new president election last year, and all the people, all the politicians, are just focused on the president election. But uh, we need also to take very similar levels of attention to the economy recovery. And I think recovery should be one of the critical agenda for the political candidates of a new president. But, you know, I don't think the economic agenda are well prepared for most of uh, strong candidates of uh, uh, the potential uh, the presence. So, and as Red Professor Young mentioned, we need also very intensive cooperation from the, our the, uh, you know, uh, assembly. Uh, because very uh, supportive regulation should be prepared and also well aligned by the National Assembly, right, to support the Korean government initiatives. So there are many things to uh, do to see the potential results from the Korean government initiative from many different stakeholders in this society. Right. I suppose only time will tell then. All right, Professor Yang, thank you very much thank for your you. thoughts. And Professor Yang chun thank you very much for your insight today. Thank you. Right, social restrictions have been raised in areas outside of the metropolitan region to curb the fourth wave here in the country. So do make an effort to abide by all prevention guidelines. See you on Friday.